Hi, how's it going? I don't care. Let's talk about my game. Pretty cool, right? So, let me tell you how I made it. Well, firstly, there is Motive. It's a game jam, specifically Ludum Dare 48, which is Latin for a game to give. And I had 48 hours to give them a from scratch game based on the theme Deeper and Deeper. I had this whole triple entendre metaphorical idea that I wanted to do with the theme, but since most of it never came to fruition, I'll simply tell you that I wanted to make a game about exploring caves. The lies part of the title is just an artifact of that story. I considered my options overnight and began work on the game at 11 in the morning the day after the theme was announced. So that's 15 hours gone because I decided sleep and homework was more important. I, I know, right? I started by making a player movement script inspired by my previous Ludum Dare entry, but updated to use Unity's new action-based input system. Uh, this is a really good system because it means better controller support. So if I ever want to, I can port the game to the Vita or the Ouya or Banana or Toaster. I spent a long while fixing some of the issues the controller had that I had neglected previously. Uh, the main one being the why does my character look like he landed in quicksand issue. Turns out, I was still making the player go downward a tiny little bit, even when he was already on the floor. I simply took the line of code causing the issue and moved it above this other line of code, whose job happens to be telling that previously mentioned line of code to bugger off. After that, I made sure I had the universal render pipeline prepared and put together some post-processing. And pooey, Peter Pepper Piper would be proud. Also, have you ever watched ice climbing tips and tricks videos? Well, I have. And as a self-proclaimed non-ice climber, this guy certainly appears to know what he's talking about. And what he's doing looks pretty darn cool, so I took some notes. The biggest thing that stood out to me was the axes. Those things are pretty badass looking. But more importantly, they added something essential to this game. A hook. I'm actually surprised that I managed to get something out of it, because truth be told, I had no clue what I was doing going in, and this mechanic took the most time out of anything that I worked on. That's interesting. I then wanted to begin doing some level design, and uh, this is where my genius really shined, so you might want to put on some sunglasses for this next part. Blender, the 3D modeling software I use, has a feature called curves, which are essentially little 3D vector curves with hands on them. You can use these curves to create a path for another object to follow. It's sort of like a tunnel. A, a, you know, a, a tunnel. A tunnel. Maybe you see where I'm going with this. The handles of these curves can also be scaled to create variation in the tunnel width, and the decimate modifier can be used to give it a lower poly look. Convert it to mesh, and boom! You have a cave, with passage edges below them. Uh, as a side note, Siri does not understand the words below them. Try and get her to say it, or, or spell it, or literally anything. It, it, it won't work. Uh, where are we? Oh yeah, uh, I flipped the normals and imported it into Unity. I used a sprite to add a little texture, and then I added some branding to the game, like this new logo I recently made that looks pretty freaking cool, and then I made my first build. The next thing to do was lighting. Now, I spent a long time looking up various lighting tutorials, uh, baked, dynamic, light probes, shadow masks, anything and everything to do with lighting I learned. It turns out all I had to do in my situation was turn off the skybox and direction light. Hey, that works. Just gotta get rid of the skybox. Now, at this point, the ice axe may or may not have actually been working. You can guess which. Point is, I had some work to do. Detection, Raycast. Is the wall in front of me in range? Controls, click, click. Am I holding down the button? Then attach the pickaxe to the wall. Am I not? Well, don't. Motion, this one took a while. I sort of pictured the movement of the axe swinging uh, kind of like a grappling hook. So I sought the internet's guidance on a sturdy solution for such an idea, and who did I come across but the Hercules of Unity himself? Danny. His solution used Unity's built-in joint system, which is a series of physics components that allow two or more rigid bodies to connect in various ways. I followed his tutorial all the way through, and I did get the results I was promised. Unfortunately, I forgot to account for the fact that axes don't actually act like grappling hooks. Yeah, it's, it's a rookie mistake, I know. But since Danny had led me towards the joint system, I figured, hey, I've got time, why not waste the next few hours of the jam learning how all of these work and then realize none of them fit my specific needs? You'll never believe it, but I actually stuck to my plan. Here's the thing you have to keep in mind. At this point, the axe was only an experimental idea, yet learning the joint system had required a ton of time investment. And like a desperate investor, I decided to leap out before things got any worse. The solution that I landed on was Vector3.lerp, which is a function that takes two different positions and a value between 0 and 1 that determines where to linearly interpolate between them. 
The two positions, of course, representing each axe, and the linear interpolation representing where the character's position would be, 0.5 obviously being the exact center. This is the moment that the ice axes became the core game mechanic. I then began designing our first proper level using the previously mentioned decimated curves method. This actually is a really smart way of going about it. Indeed it is. While designing the level, I simultaneously came up with a way to make text appear on screen. And by came up with, I mean I watched a tutorial from the wonderful Blackthorn Prod. Good evening, Clarice. How has your day been? Did you enjoy your liver flavored? Ice cream? I certainly hope you did. Before bed, I produced a whole bunch of textures in my A Sprite factory and make a shader in Unity that uses time plus the Y position of an object to make it look like certain textures flow. I also popped open GarageBand on the old iPad mini and pumped out some tunes. This is one of the ones that didn't make it in. Take a listen. Pretty cool. But now it was the final day and I had a lot of work to do. I opened Blender and I made a bunch of stalagmite-esque platforms. Very cylindrical stalagmites, but stalagmites nonetheless. I got them into the game and functioning exactly as intended. Oh yeah, these are these are easy, dude. Easy, I'm gonna jump. Okay, so that one didn't work, but at least this one does. I made a texture for parts of the wall that can be climbed. I made hands for the player that never ended up getting used, but are still very much there, just sitting at your sides. I imported some Google fonts because public fonts are allowed. I tried using the animator to create a screen shake effect whenever a deep underground disturbance occurred, though I didn't actually end up using it because it was a pain in the ass. Most disturbing of all, I manipulated my spit to create some sound effects for the game. Yeah, I don't like that for sure. I mean, I loved it, but... I added flowing acid lakes and achieved that lovely glow by using a spotlight. I just gave it a really wide angle, and uh, yeah. I added stalactites. That's like a stalagmite, only coming down if you didn't know. I also noticed that the headlamp I had attached to the player gets a little over amplified by the bloom when close up. So I tried to fix it, but I didn't have time to come up with a formula that really got the results I was looking for. However, I have found one now, so uh, for those wondering, here you go. But as for anyone who played my game during the jam, uh, you're welcome for being blinded. With the deadline rapidly approaching, things are moving along fast. But, like always, there's a catch, and it wasn't a nice one. I have a script called Trigger. It requires that the accompanying object have a collider, a box collider no less, set to Trigger. What this means is that the character will not stop when it touches that collider. No siree, they will not stop, bump, bounce, or even slow when touching this kind of trigger. And it worked just fine when I was adding tutorial triggers, but then when I went for the acid death trigger, it just sort of decided, hey, what if I was a solid? I realize now that the problem is probably in the method I used for checking ground collisions, but at the time, that didn't even cross my mind. I tried every other possible solution I could think of, and by the time I threw up my hands and said, screw it, y'all can live, it was six o'clock, and the jam was over. I actually had another hour to finish. Uh, so I did, I finished the rest of the level. I added some stalactites, not stalagmites, stalactites that you can hold on to to get over the pit. I was so desperate to fill in this level and prove that this axe game mechanic has potential that I kind of forgot that I'd only just introduced the mechanic in the previous room. Thus, the final room is way too hard. Well, when the colliders work, it's way too hard. Otherwise, it's not too bad. I uploaded the WebGL and PC versions of the game right before the deadline, though it turns out that the project size, even after compression, was nearly half a gigabyte, so uh, uh, I'll admit it may have finished uploading a teensy tiny bit past the deadline. But nevertheless, the game was in fact up. And as I write this, the jam is still going on and the voting ends soon. I've been playing some of the other entries and I'd love to talk about some of my favorites in the future. Uh, and as for the future of my game, well, I'm gonna be honest, I, I really like that axe feature and I'm not ready to give it up just yet. So I've been remaking the project from scratch with some upgrades to the various systems. But as far as my contribution to Ludum Dare goes, that is all. 
If you want to play the game, I'll have a uh, link in the video description. Uh, just a note on the WebGL version of the game, it stinks. Uh, turns out WebGL doesn't support linear color space. And as far as that concerns you, that means if you play it, you will not enjoy it because it is way too dark and way too difficult. Anyways, that's all I have to say on that front. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my game. Alright. Bye.